Welcome to the first ever Dummy Discussion Podcast. This is going to be all about football for the first couple episodes. I'm Coach Isaac. This is Muscle Dummies co-founder, Jake. And we're going to be doing a little bit of a reverse interview here. Jake is going to be interviewing me with some simple questions so I can help all my football players out as they go into this season. Super pumped to start this, so make sure you click the subscribe button and you also share this with a friend who needs to hear it. And without further ado, we will get right into the interview. Sit down with you, buddy. It's good, man. I'm excited to ask you about the package, man. It's been uh, it's been crazy to see the growth uh, of where it's gone. It's what been maybe a year. Yeah, honestly, just just about a year. I think I did the date check the other day, and it was July 28th. Actually, is it a year today? Is the, today the 28th? Today's the 27th, I think. So, so it's one year, the 28th. Let's go. This feels appropriate then, the one year anniversary. It does, and honestly, like where, where it was a year ago, I don't even like to say it's been a year because where it was a year ago was, was it was it's not even like in the realm of like, it was just a thought, like right. it was a thought and I was kind of like putting it together. Originally I was doing like a uh, field workout plan, gym workout plan, and now it's like obviously it's the whole package, it's all together, so. It's evolved a lot in, yeah. that, in that year. And, yeah, you'd and, say the first two, three months were like, eh, maybe starting, but. Yeah, I think, and then the in season one was really the first one that ever came out, but it wasn't position specific. And I looked at it because I'm doing the in season ones now. They're dropping uh, August 13th. Right. Pre sale August 10th. It's going to be $20 extra. There's 10 spots available each position. There's hundreds of people signed up already. Sign up for the in season wait list. There's 10 spots each position. August 10th through the 12th is $20 extra, but that is the pre-sale, and then August 13th is the regular sale. Um, so make sure you guys sign up for that. Uh, definitely, it's huge. It's the best one yet. Um, but basically, the point is, is I was going through the old one to try to cross-reference and see where I was at, because I was like, oh, that's a good package. Of course. Looking at the old one, bro. It's it come a long way. First, it looked really bad. Right. Like, it, really, it looked really bad. It looked very amateur, and... The workouts in it were not bad. They have like one third of the workouts hyperlinked. I got like barbell clean to press, like not hyperlinked. Right. I like think stuff the workouts like themselves have probably evolved a lot, uh, quite a bit as well. I feel like your lifting is a bit, has evolved quite a bit in the last year. Yeah, and I learned a lot too. Right. I, I learned I learned a lot along the way, and it's working though. The, the testimonials that yeah. you've been getting are insane, but it works. I like I personally have been lifting that style as well, and I've had like, several breakthroughs. Yeah, and especially just like me just kind of trialing and going back and forth and seeing what works and what doesn't work because every package is different there's four packages that come out a year there's there's different aspects of training you need to focus on like for example like winter training like you're really trying to get your numbers up right you're focused on like the heavy compounds of course we're always contrast trained doing plyos of course but like in the summer now you're kind of like you're you're should be at pretty much max strength and now you're just really fine-tuning that explosive right. it's still working on strength of course um but just just like how it's how it's kind of been tweaked along the way in the design like just hands down yeah, ridiculous fantastic yeah ever since the 3.0 package like from 2.0 3.0 to 3.0 was good but 4.0 is is looking really good yeah, 4.0 yeah. was really good from, especially if you're a high school football player yeah. with not not much direction like that 4.0 breaks it down exactly you don't even have to think you get up and look at the package what am i going to do today right and that's kind of i'm not sure we're going to get into it but that's kind of where i was at when I created it because like just little backstory about me like being from the middle of nowhere not having a strength and conditioning coach not having really any mentors to really guide me in the whole process from lifting to field right. work to nutrition and all that stuff it all matters and that's how you really make a change in your football career and that's how I was able during COVID to change myself from a mediocre football player to what I would consider a much better right. football you had player. A really and breakout season, yeah. The testimonials that it, the, my personal testimony spoke for itself there, um, with all the stats and stuff. But it all matters, and I created the package because I wanted to create something that I would have got in high school, and that I was looking for too, because right. there was nothing like it. Like. I'm sure there was a linebacker workout program somewhere, but Probably just a base workout plan in the gym. Right, and it's right. just it's just the gym, 
and then you're you're just at the gym and the workout plan sucks right and you're doing it and you're like i'm not seeing any gains like you might get stronger because a lot of workout plans are based on just like strictly strength right not like functional functional right. strength and then position specific yeah explosiveness body control mobility it's all in there and that's that's why i created the package is to give high school football players everything they need all in your one-stop shop Right. You don't have to get anything else. You don't have to think about it. Like you said, you wake up in the morning, you check the schedule, it's tells you there. when to eat, tells you when to lift, tells you when to go to the field, and then it has all of those things broken down for it on a single page. Like right. your day one is your workouts right here, your field workouts right here, your schedule is right here. Everything you need right in front of your face, right. and it tells you what you need to do. So you don't even have, to, like you said, you don't have to think about right. it. Sixty-seven pages of just straight value. Everything from nutrition to hydration yeah. to stretching and what you should be doing before your game, how to st study film. Yeah how to get recruited because I think the biggest thing at the school we went to like you know this better than anyone there was no guidance at all it was like right. hey we're gonna bench press today and then like we're playing a school this weekend let's go figure it out right right and and yeah again that's that's why the whole thing was created just to help right. players like me in that situation I just remember I reflect on um, my high school uh, football career a lot because whenever I'm making content that's kind of what I'm gearing at I'm right. like you know what would I have, pre have appreciated the most what perfect would, what, example yeah. what would have provided the most value for me and like honestly I'm marketing every single one of my posts the package but what people fail to understand is that is legitimately the best piece of advice I could give you is to get that I spent right weeks, months, and almost a full year now working to perfect that package because that's the whole point. Is like this is the fastest way for you to become an elite football right. player because everything's done for you. You can watch a video five linebacker drills. You might get five linebacker drills from me that are great, but you're missing out on the lifting. You're missing out on the nutrition and that package makes it so you don't have to guess. So a part of me is like, I feel guilty like marketing every single video, but like realistically, that is the best piece of advice right. I could give you. It's not like invest in like that. this way or that one thing. It, right. The package is is the thing. Right. And it's just it, like people ask me all the time, like, hey man, what can I do to become a better defensive end? And I'm like, I always try to DM them and I try to give them some value first. I'm like, all right, you know, work to. on your get off, right. work on your hands, work on your hips. I think your um, content is value like this. either way. Right. right. But essentially, I give them a piece of value and then I'm like, you really need the five-star football package Absolutely. defensive end edition because it is hands down the best thing. And right. again, it's got everything you need. It's the fastest way for you to become a better defensive end. Right. Quarterback, linebacker, wide receiver. It's all done for you. And that was the whole, that was the whole goal of it. Um, so, I mean, there is a part of me that's like, yeah, I don't, I don't really like marketing it a lot. But then the other half of me is like, me marketing this is the best thing I could do for football players. Right. So like that's like the guiltless side because I'm like this. Th I'm helping people. When I have a sale, I don't consider it like, oh, I'm making money. I'm like, I just I just really help the kid right. in their process because the testimonials speak for themselves. The reviews speak for themselves. Mm, absolutely. I've had like two four star reviews. So how how can people deny the fact that it's so good? Because you, I've had two it's four star reviews out of so many. Um, it's just proven itself over and over again, and I'm blessed to be able to be in a position to really help high school football players. Right, like and you've done that very well. All, yeah. all your contacts are value packed. And I would say the, like we got in season coming up, obviously, and that's going to help them day to day in season. Literally day to day, Monday game day, Friday, what to do. But the way you design the package, it's all year. So you're talking right. about in the summer they should be have building up strength. They should be at peak right now. Hopefully those that were on the package of the summer can shift right into the in season. Then you got the off, the off season, the spring ball, winter ball. Yeah. It's all there for you. Right. So if you have no idea, you're a parent watching this. Maybe I want to get my kids position specific training. Don't have the money for a trainer. You four football packages in one year. You buy and your kids set for the whole year. Right. And get five pony next year. Yeah, and that's a huge point too. Is like you want to go pay for a personal trainer. I don't. I don't disagree with that. If you right. want to go get field position specific training from a specialist and there's one in your area, sure. Absolutely. But you're going to pay these guys, you know, $30, $40 a session. Right. It's going to be thousands of dollars up front. Right? Exactly. And all of it's done for you in the package. It might not be as advanced. It might not be as good. But, like, to a point, like, they are developmental packages. You should, at your specific position, be working the same stuff over and over and over right. and over and over again. And it doesn't always require you to have to go on the field and do these crazy bizarre drills with 18 cones and 18 hurdles. It's A lot of it's just the fundamental stuff that you have to perfect and you have right. to get good at. 
Because if you always focus on the advanced stuff, you don't get anywhere because there's no way to no track foundation. that progress. Right. You can't you can't track how how you're jump cutting and moving through all these different cones. But you know, as a linebacker, you can you can track how good your hip flip is. Right. That's just something very simple, um, and that's that's the whole point of it. So like, you could get a five star football package and then go see a trainer once once a week. I think that would be highly beneficial. Absolutely. But to help with like the intensity of right. the workouts. But I think getting on the package yourself is good for a high school football player and give them the accountability to get out there and do the work themselves because they have all the tools right. in their hands. They just got to do it. Right. We have the videos that say, if you don't know how to do the hip flip, right, watch the video. Right. It's right there. Yeah. And and that's uh, the, it's just a big thing, too, is like people are like, you know, your package is expensive. And I'm like, dude, I understand that it's expensive. And the reason why it's expensive is because I'm saving you all this money. And they, they fail to realize that. I had a, I had a call last night with a... a person looking for a personal coach this year. My coaching now is expensive. I'm only taking three kids for the seasons. It's a couple thousand dollars to, to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Right. But the one-on-one -on -one work with me is like, you basically become my best friend, get access to me, fully exclusive. We go over film. Last year I took a kid from a JV, um, a JV bench player defensive lineman to a varsity starter wow. who was making plays. Right. Shout out Eddie. Um, Let's go Eddie. But like the, the point is, is it's expensive, but at the same time too, like Eddie would be like, like, for example, Eddie DM'd me this, this past spring, and he DM'd me a bowl game that he was going to go to, like a high school bowl game, and a lot of them are, wow. a lot of them are BS. Right. He DM'd me, and it was like three grand to go to this bowl game. And he's like, I'm thinking about it. He's like, I'm going to save up and go. And I'm like, dude, it's not worth it. Because I had done it in the past. Right. I went down to New Orleans, and I played in a bowl game. And my mom, I think she spent about three grand doing that. And it was, the, it was not worth it whatsoever. Right. So... You pay me to help, and I help you save money. You right. know what I mean? It's the same thing with a trainer. You're not spending thousands of dollars on a trainer. You don't need to. If you want to go once a week, great. I help you not go to these camps. I help you save money on travel. I help you save money on dumb stuff because with anything in this world, there's a lot of scammy, like, I want your money, and right. I'm going I'm to give you a false promise. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of that in the recruiting world, like, Come to this this third party camp, and there's going to be a hundred big D one coaches there. You go to them, and there's none. Right. Because you already paid the money, they don't care. But I would argue, you said the package started, let's say maybe air quotes a year ago, but it started six years ago because yeah. you're saving all these mistakes that you made going to the camps, having no idea how to recruit, getting you spent the thousands of dollars right. on on personal coaching, so you're condensing this six years of mistakes and knowledge that you've acquired into a $179.99 package right. for them to consume and save all the mistakes. Right. And that that's something too that, that I really feel like is, is very foundational in the package and in the business as well is I'm not trying to tell you stuff that I haven't done before. Right. I've done I've done it all. I've I've taken myself from uh, lifting like a bodybuilder to lifting like an athlete and seen extreme success. Absolutely. I've taken myself from a mediocre football player to what I would consider a very good football player at the college football level. And that's through what you're doing. That's through what you're training. That's through how you're training. That's through right. you know how you're scheduling your day. And I, I've done it personally, so I don't feel bad selling you something that I know works right. because I've done it myself. And I will never tell anybody who consumes my stuff to do something unless I have done it before. Absolutely, and that, that's I think that will show in the content like you're pretty genuine and honest and not too salesy. You realistically weren't the most gifted athlete on the field, even though we went to a small school. I'd say you are now through the athletic lifting, doing the plyos, position specific drills, all of that. Did, did you always, was your goal waking up at five years old ever, I, I want to go to the NFL, or did in time as you got better and you saw this goal and you're like, hey, this work, this direct input that I'm doing, I'm getting this output, maybe this is becoming more realistic. Yeah. To be honest with you, I didn't think going to the league was that hard. And that's and that's just truthfully how I feel about it. Um, I didn't really have the goal until probably sophomore year of high school. I always, I always played football. Right. And then my sophomore year of high school, I kind of started doing some things that kind of impressed myself on film. I was like, oh, that was pretty good. They were starting to impress other people. They are like, oh, that was good stuff, right. good stuff. So... I did want to go D1. I, I knew that for a fact. So 
I put all my effort into trying to go D1. I was lifting. I just didn't know any better, so I was training right. the wrong way. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, my junior year summer, I went to camps all summer, um, built built some hype up around, you know, my, my play because I, I was always a good football player. Um, but it was really what, like, what differentiated that next level. Like, I was always very mm -hmm. strong. I could, I could do the basics. I've always been a very coachable person, That's so true. I would go to camps. Coaches would coach me up at camp, and I would, I would be receptive, and I would listen, and they would like that. So, like, they would, they would always be apt to hit me up after camp and be like, yo, like, really like what you did at camp. You're a good leader. Um, you're very receptive. You, you hustled really hard. I always worked really, really hard because I knew coming from a small school that something that I had to do was work really, really hard, harder than everybody else if I wanted to get noticed. Um, so... About like my my junior year, senior year, I was really like I want to go D one, and then I'm gonna and and I'm gonna go D one, and then I'm gonna transfer to a bigger D one school because I knew at the end of my senior year I didn't have as many bigger D one opportunities I had. I had a bunch of preferred walk ons, um, to like Mac schools like Buffalo, Toledo, right. Um, but I ended up taking the the preferred walk on offer to Wagner because I was like it's smaller, I'll be able to play there. Long story short, I went there. I thought I was gonna be great. I wasn't where I needed to be. Um, I still wanted to go to the NFL, but I kind of lost my love for football just because I didn't like Wagner that much at all. Right. And then COVID happened, and I was really able to take a step back and be like, all right, I, if I really want to go to the NFL, I need to do this, 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 so this. Is that this. when it got realistic? Like, you got the exposure D1, like, whoa, this is not what I expected. Now I have time to go yeah. in the lab and work. Yeah, and COVID worked out well for me. I had access to a gym, had access to my trainer. Um, so I was able to fine tune all the stuff because I was already strong. Um, I just had to, pr I just had to make the transition from what I could do in the weight room to kind of applying that to the field. And that's just, you know, changing how you lift, changing how you eat, changing what you're doing right. on the field. And I was able to do that and I was able to grind really hard during COVID. And I knew that everyone was taking a step back during COVID and I was taking a step forward. Absolutely. So I just told myself I need to capitalize off this momentum and, you know, just go have a great season. I transferred to Ithaca D3 at the time, and I just went and I had a great season after COVID. I saw the work come to fruition. I saw the changes right. work, and I was like, wow, like more people need to know about this too. And that's also when I started social media was uh, during COVID because I was bored and I was training. I was training like a weirdo in the gym. Like I'm doing like... You might as well show people. I'm yeah. doing like BOSU ball squats. It was worthless, but I was just kind of like experimenting and seeing like doing squats on a BOSU ball, like 275 pounds. Right. Like, That's crazy. Just like, <laughs> just like dumb stuff, but I had to fine tune it over time and I started posting, got some, got some hype, I guess, on social media, started blowing up and... And then I was like, you know what, I really just want to go to the NFL. Like, I really just want to prove everybody wrong. Um, everyone who told me I couldn't do it coming from a small town. And it just it just got to the point where I knew I could do it. And I knew what was going to take me to the league was hard work. And by hard work, I mean being disciplined on the field, being disciplined in the weight room, being disciplined in the kitchen. And I knew that if I was able to do that, then I would get 1% better every day in all three of those uh, facets. And then by the time I was ready to go to the league by my senior year of college, I knew I would be good enough for a shot. I didn't think it was realistic. A part of me did when I was not a humble, uh, not a humble uh, person. You know, back when I was a senior in high school, I'd be a first round, first first right. pick of the NFL That's draft. That's just growing up, though. But, yeah. but growing up, I was like, you know, I can, I can easily get a shot. You know what I mean? All I need is a shot because when I used to go to those camps. I would just work really hard, right. and I would make myself an asset in the coach's eyes. They would be like, wow, this kid is very hardworking. He's talented. He's also very receptive to coaching, and he makes the changes. So all I needed was a shot at a training camp, which I, which I figured would be very easy, and then just show the coaches that I could do that and work my way up. I knew it wasn't going to be like, you get a contract, and you're the best player in the world. Right. And, you know, obviously it didn't work out like that because I made a bunch of changes and I'm not playing in college anymore with still two years of eligibility left. But I knew, and I would be confident too, I'm not going to live in a fantasy world, but if I did go back to college, I still had the dream and still had the drive that I don't think it would be that complicated to get a shot. And then right. once I knew if I was able to get a shot, then I would be able to show the coaches that I should be on the team because I can help. You know what I mean? Right. I can help teams Absolutely. win, and that's that's how it that's how it was 
um, through college when I was at Ithaca. We were a nationally ranked winning team, and then I went to Assumption. They went 5-5 five and five the year before, contributed there, were, ended up being a nationally ranked team, won the conference for the first time in a while, um, ended up going to playoffs, and I, I just wanted to be around winners, and that was a big reason why I left Albany is because I knew whatever I did, they weren't going to win, and right. I just wasn't, I wasn't comfortable being around people who weren't going to win. Like, I've always just wanted to win, and I just think that if I got a shot, I would be able to help a team which you did to win. Which you didn't. You got got a ring right. out of it. Right. Absolutely. That's so. So you, you so you did all that. Do you still have eligibility left at school? Yeah, I still have probably two years. So what are you what are you thinking there? Are you going to pursue football again, or are you going to stick to the online social media and give it back to other kids? So, it's really a tough question. So this past season, we went won the conference. I did really well. I won any ten newcomer of the year. Uh, I had a really good season. My stat line was just ridiculous. Um, in terms of like interceptions, fumbles, TFLs, like all just big plays. Um, and it was a great season, but you know, the business world kind of took over. And for me, it was, it was always about money, right? which is unfortunate. And this is before I really came to God. For and a lot of people though, I think won't admit that that's, that's the case and they don't have a true love for their business, their, their sport, whatever it might be. It's money. Right. But it was good on you for realizing that. Right. And and, and if it, this was really before I really devoted my life to Christ, so now I don't really care that much as long as I have everything I can need. I, as long as I have everything I need and I can provide, like that's all that really matters. But it was all about money, and realistically, it was about me being able to buy my mom whatever she wanted to. Right. And that was, for me, that was the only way. Like, I never liked school. I never, I never really wanted to do a, a nine to five. I was never about that. So I was like, I have to go to the league because this is the only way I can make a right. million dollars and then buy my mom whatever she wants. Um, and long story short, started the business, started Muscle Dummies, started the five star football package, and I realized that I had, I had a lot of stuff that I could provide to others, a lot of useful stuff, and I could make money doing that. And honestly, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with providing people value. I genuinely love seeing other people win, especially if it's from something that I was able to provide right. for them. Because, again, I, I knew how I felt in high school. I didn't feel good. I was always very insecure. I was like, I need to do this. I need to do this. I was living, I was living like a lie. Um, and I was living in, in other people's shoes to what they thought about me. Right. And I was just trying to live up to this expectation and just be the be this superstar in the field and that's all I ever wanted to do and it was all about money. That's honestly all it was ever about and until I realized that I wasn't able to like really step back and be like, "Whoa, like do I love football? Yes, I do love football, but I do also love what I do now and right. provide to other people as well." So, long story short, I ended the last season. I just dropped out of college, but I wanted to give it one more shot and leave it open-ended. So in the spring a couple months ago, I, I went down this rabbit hole and just found a bunch of CFL tryouts around the country. And I reached out to a couple agents and I basically told them my story. And I went to a couple CFL tryouts and I went to one with the Edmonton Elks in Baltimore, Maryland. It was like an eight hour camp. We ran like hundreds of one-on-ones. It was crazy. The camp, the, the camp didn't go well. It went all right for me, but there was another linebacker there who just, like, who balled out. He right. did not lose one one-on-one -on -one rep. He was great. He ended up getting a contract. Nice. And God bless him, he was a great dude. So, but I didn't really like the coaches. I didn't really like how the coaches were anyways. And Edmonton, I don't know if you know where that is, but that is crazy far yeah, up in Canada. Like right. And I was <laughs> like, so, I was like, you know, I don't really know if I want to do this. I'd rather just pursue business. So, I gave it one more shot after that. Two weeks after that, I had a uh, trial with the Montreal Alouettes. And that's pretty close to where I'm at in New York. So, that camp was down in Charlotte. And I did very well at that camp. Right. The coaches loved me. Um, so, I, they gave... I gave them my contact information, and I kind of just really left it open, and I'm just really leaving the the future of my football up to God. I'm not banking on anything. If they call me, great. If not, great. I, I'm happy either way. Um, and you got a good backup right now. Yeah. Like We're building a couple of businesses that are all going to be fine, so if it doesn't work out, great. You're going to add value yeah. to hundreds of thousands of people, whether it's through weight loss or football. Yeah, and I think that's really 
where my satisfaction will come from is from watching other kids who are just like me in high school. They're young, hungry, and don't have access to the right, right. tools. Seeing them succeed genuinely makes me happy, and I just think if I continue down this road and I continue to get people on the package and continue to genuinely help people out, then once these kids start committing to school, they start getting D1 offers. I just had a kid get some get a good D, D2 offer the other day. Um, I've worked with D1 commits before, so like seeing that really truthfully makes me happy. It is weird because back in the day when I was in high school, I used to be so jealous of other kids getting D1 offers. I'm like, I'm better than them, I'm better than them, I'm better than right. them. But I realized that everyone has their own path, mm -hmm. and as soon as I committed to a school out of high school, as soon as I committed to Wagner, I was like, bro, none of that stuff matters. Nope. Like. Your path is the one that matters, and all you can do is be supportive to other people. There's no reason to tear other people down. There's no reason to talk about other people. Like, this is just the game. Coaches are looking for specific stuff. I can't compare myself to a wide receiver. Right. Um, and a lot of those kids who had success when I was in high school that I envied and I was jealous of, I'm good friends with them to this day because I respect their their skill and I respected their work ethic, right. too, and they deserved everything that they got, and I was just ungrateful and I was impatient right. and until I was able to develop those character traits and really understand that this is about me but it's also about them too like that doesn't discredit them just because it's all about me you should just focus on your own path and not tear others down along the way and this is how like you'll just be a better human overall right. and you will focus on becoming better yourself because you're focused on you getting better and you're not focused on everyone around you and then you can uplift people around you too who are also succeeding I mean they have the same goal as you they want to go D1 they want to go to the NFL get to know those people and then those people will bring you up and Absolutely. you will bring them up as well surround too. yourself with those people in that competitive environment and honestly that's something I, I regretted a lot um, is not finding those people around me and wanting to work with them, instead I sat back and was like, you know, I'm jealous. And right. it, I didn't say I was jealous at the time. I said, right. yeah, I said I'm better. Like I deserve a, an offer from that school. Instead of being like, hey man, like let's get together and train. Right. Like yeah, this kid's got an got offer. There. You know what I mean? Right. Like he can show me something, and then maybe I'll be able to show him something. Right. And then who knows? Maybe he tells his coach he got an offer. Hey coach, I know this kid. He's really good. He's got a really good work ethic. Like you would love him because a lot of it's just awareness too. Right. They they have they know this person who connected them with this coach, and then that coach ended up giving them an offer, and they just don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. So that that's something that I do regret, but it, it it all worked out well because I was able to kind of take a slice of humble pie and sit back and be like, okay, this is how it is. And then in college, when I transferred to like college training. It, it didn't matter. I was working with, I went down to Nashville, worked with current NFL players. I worked with big time D1 players. I worked with D2 players. I worked with D3 players. And it was just such a mutual level of respect. And I just wish I had adapted that earlier. But um, it all really worked out, worked out very well. And I'm very happy with where I'm at and how my career ended. And I'm blessed to be able to have said that I've played D1, D2, and D3 because I can give so much value just in what I've experienced to young football that, players. That's the most valuable part is your your experience maybe isn't that unique, but it feels unique of all the different levels of schools you've seen, the tryouts that you've been to, the CFL. You've gotten this exposure to all these different levels of talents in these different areas, and you're like, I, need, I know what I need to do to get to that level and then beat that guy at the tryout and win those one-on-ones like he was doing, right. which is in the package. Like right. the, the, You're helping those kids with stuff like right. that so they don't have to spend the money to go to those camps. But the uh, the mental shift I want I to, to go back to, because there was like two parts, and maybe one led to the other. Um, and, and what I liked about what's specifically in the in-season package that's coming up is we call them soft skills, whatever you want to call them, is, is kind of that team-first mentality building up your team like you were doing at Assumption. It's one thing to be the biggest, the strongest, the most athletic guy on the field, but if, if you're an independent individual out there on the field not operating with your team, it, it's all worthless. But I think you adopted the mindset and maybe the, the humble pie came first of you being able to step back and realize, I, you know, maybe I'm not that good, I'm, I feel this way. Why do I feel this way? Why do I feel jealous? Why do I want to take from this other person but it, it sounds like you got through that and figured it out. And like as your friend, it's been pretty refreshing and it's been exciting for me to watch the personal growth, the business growth, everything, all that growth that maybe the humble pie led to how you were at Assumption because at Assumption, it was fun to watch you because you were going out there to have fun. You knew you knew the work was done, right? Yeah. You, 
you didn't have to go out there and prove it. You proved it to yourself by getting up early every morning, sticking to the routine, and you went out there and just balled out and said, how can I help my team? And how can we get to a victory rather than how can I, Isaac, get the highlight that I want to get to get noticed by the coach? And I think those soft little skills stick out way more than any athletic ability. So was it the humble pie first, then into the, the team shift, or, or how did that work? It was definitely the humble pie first, but I am here to say that if you want to get recognized, especially like if you're a high school kid trying to get recognized by college coaches, or you're even a, a college kid trying to get recognized by NFL coaches, the easiest way to get recognized is by being on a really good team, right? a winning team. Mm -hmm. If your team is consistently winning, coaches will naturally gravitate towards that, whether that's NFL, whether that's college. This team has a winning culture. I want a kid with a winning culture. Right. He's, he's experienced winning. So as soon as I was able to kind of understand that and be like, if my team wins, it benefits me. And this will help me continue to grow. So it just got to a point where I was like, you know, I need to uplift everyone. I need to make sure people are doing the right thing. Because, again, if they win, it benefits everybody. Exactly. And, and instead of focusing on, like, just me and like everything else is their fault like that's how you're on a losing team right if you're, you're surrounding yourself with that losing team like hey i'm the best player on this team that serves me the best it's it's not going to go anywhere and i mean what coach in their right mind wants a kid on a 1 and 11 team right who cares you might be the best player in the world and that says a lot about you you're you're you got so much skill but you are on a 1 and 11 team you have no leadership skills. Why do I want you on my team? You can't right. even get your own team to win, yet you are so good. And if you can use that skill to inspire others around you and to lift other people up around you, one, it'll help your team win, and two, your coach will want to put you in positions to win. And this was something that happened to me at Assumption. Like I was put in a position to win all the time, which is why I got the stats that I got. Right. I'm not going to say I was a supernatural, unreal football player, because I'd be in the league right now if that was the case. Absolutely. But my coaches saw that I wanted other people to win, and I was willing to sacrifice. And then when it came down to it, and it was third and long, they wanted to put me in a position to win because they trusted me right. to win. And that trust stemmed from wanting other people on my team to win, inspiring others, leading others, being a good player, doing the right things off the field, like it all adds up over time, does. and especially as a football player, you just want to stack as many positives as you possibly can on your side and just get rid of the negatives because the negatives will bite you. One big negative can erase 10,000 positives. You could be the best player in the world, but you get into one bad incident, and then your whole career is done. I've seen it over and over right. and over again, and it's just its very sad. But this is also a me-first instead of a team-first mentality. And that was even like even in business. Like I, I'm sure you can attest to this. Like When we first started this, I always thought I had the answer. I always thought, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. I don't care what Jake says. I don't care what John says. And I would get your guys' feedback, and then I'd be like, oh, I disagree. But like as soon as you adopt that team-first mentality, like regardless, in life, in your family, in business, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. As soon as you can take that slice of humble pie and be like, you know what, I really appreciate this other person, like your growth is limited. Right, which it, it's like we're saying it now with little life experience of, of what we've experienced yeah. to get to this point. And like that's the point of us talking about this is hopefully whoever 16-year-old is watching this can can hear this and maybe they're like, God, oh, these guys are full of it. They, they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Like, we're trying to save these lessons learned and, and maybe the question is like, is it as easy as a, as a kid that's trying to be good at football just learns and hopefully retains this and applies it to his life or I think you got to get out there and put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Go out there and be the worst player on the field and learn these lessons because it's going to save you in the long run. Like getting out and being the worst, like we recently started doing some combat sports and we're getting smoked right, right. but it, it does something to you like wow maybe i'm not the best at this putting yourself in that uncomfortable environment i get that a lot i get the question a lot like you know how can i get better at tackling and it's like you just gotta go do it right. just do it over and over and over again yes there are certain things you can do to be better but especially when you're so young um you're a freshman you're a sophomore like you should just have a learning mentality 
Because when I was in that situation, I can reflect and just say I was so focused on all the other stuff that I wasn't learning enough about the game. Like, I didn't even know the game of football until I went to college and they started breaking it down. I was like, whoa, like, I needed to learn this. And if I learned right. this earlier, like, I would be very far ahead of the game right now. But, yeah, I think you're totally right. Like, you have to go out there and be the worst. And nobody, nobody was very good before they were very bad or something. And I don't care what, like, there are people with unnatural talent, but a phenomenon you see with those people is that they don't last because they're built on a shaky foundation. Right. They were born with this unnatural gift, and they take it for granted, and they don't put in the extra work. They don't go to the gym and train, train properly. And then next thing you know, they get hurt on the field, and their season's over. Their career's over. They make a stupid decision because they didn't have to claw and scratch and work for it. Right. Like me, it took years to get to where I was. So I really appreciated, I really appreciated the time that I spent where I felt like I was much better than what I was. Right. Because it took me a, a lot of hard work. It took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get up to that point. And that's really what matters. And I truly think that if you are somebody who's not the best right now, and you, you just put your best foot forward every single day, mm -hmm. and you make it apparent to yourself that I will not stop until I am better, then that is the most important part, and you are absolutely blessed for that. Because that side of the river is so much more you'll be so much more grateful for that side because you were able to go through the darkness. You were able to be right. the person who was bad. You were able to be the person who was getting critiqued by the coaches. You were able to be the person who was made fun of. Like This is what makes you appreciate the other side so much. And I truly feel bad for people who don't believe that and who don't experience that because as somebody who did go through that and right. made that complete change, it was just super beneficial too. And then again, now I'm able to help kids make that change. But... We're all young. We're all dumb at some point, and, and especially on the football field. Like you're not gonna know what hits you. You're gonna get absolutely smacked sometimes, right. and like you just have to understand that life's gonna be all right, and you're gonna figure it out. Right. And sometimes the best way to learn is just to get smacked in the face. You have you have to. Even if you are the worst player on the field, you're you're on JV. Maybe you're a freshman on a on a varsity team. Like yes, you got to go through the work, get smacked, be the worst player on the field. But I truly think like. And this is programmed in the package, which I think that value goes above just the physical ability that you're going to attain through the package. Is you, even if you are the worst, you can be the best, most positive player on the team. You can be the best at uplifting your teammates. You can be the best at being coachable. You can be the best at being a team first leader. And then the skills will yeah. come, which you talk about in the package, which I think a lot of other training packages don't account for. They're yeah. just like, hey, do this lifting, go out and catch five balls today. Um, but that's what I love about the package, and then on top of it, the community aspect of yeah. the package. Being in the private Discord, access to you, access to other players, so you can learn and just through osmosis, get these little things, these right. little gems, because those, again, those little soft skills are going to set you aside from the, those athletic abilities. People, people fail to see the, like the long term, right. and when it gets to a point where. Like you were like me, you were a mediocre football player. You put in the work, you changed who you were as a football player. You you got good at football. Like then it's the little things that count. I'm not gonna change my athleticism much more. It's pretty much maxed out. Right. It could always get better. Sure. I'm constantly chipping away, constantly chipping away. Right. But you go from these leaps and bounds to like these little kind of baby footsteps, and you realize that consistency, hard work positive attitude, like all these little nuances make the difference. And Absolutely. this is what sends you into this this long-term game. And that's where a lot of people fall off is because they might try to get better at football, but that's all they're focused on is getting better mm -hmm. at football. And until you're able to kind of like shift that mentality and just be like, it's one day at a time, just one day at a time. You know, I just got to get better today. I just got to get a little bit stronger today. I got to get a little bit faster today. I got to get a little bit smarter today. If you can do that every single day, you'll look back in two or three years and be like, whoa, I just came a very long way yeah, from I where I was at. thousand days of getting better, right? Exactly. And that's, that's, where, that's where, like, I was like, it's not going to be hard for me to make it to the league because I understand this. Right. And I understand that if I can just get better every single day, then... It'll get to a point where it would be stupid for me to say I wouldn't get a shot. Okay, I get hurt, I get injured. Yes, of course. That stuff's always always going to uh, be a possibility because you're playing a violent game. Right. But 
when you just continue to put your best foot forward every day, that is just the most important thing you could ever do because that's where a lot of people fall off again is they, they, they have a bad week. They're like, you know, I lost motivation. And that kind of gets me into a different thing. Like, I get so many people all the time, they're like, Coach, how can I get some motivation to do this? And I'm like, your dreams don't motivate you enough. Right. Like, do you understand how hard it is going to be to go D1, to go to the NFL? Mm -hmm. Like, you, need, you cannot afford to take a day off. And you shouldn't be going to the gym and lifting heavy seven days a week. That's not what I'm talking about. But every single day you have to get 1% better in one or more facets of the game, whether that's watching film, that's going to the gym, that's going to the field, that's eating right, that's stretching. It's the simple stuff like that. And then all of a sudden people fall off and they're like, you know, I'm lacking motivation. I haven't gone to the gym in three or four days. I'm like, then your dream doesn't mean enough to you. Absolutely. And that's that's the biggest thing right there is like clearly you're just kind of like living for other people at that point. And that's a big problem. And that's that's you living on shaky foundation is that you know you're you're telling people you're gonna go to the NFL because you like watching it on Sunday. Right. And you're telling people you're like I'm gonna go to college. I'm gonna be. You're just you're very prideful, mm -hmm. and you don't understand how much it's gonna take to 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 get there. And it's gonna take a lot. And by me saying that, I think it would have been unrealistic for me not to get a shot is not bad for me to say because what I'm doing on a daily basis is not what other people are doing on a daily basis. Absolutely. I'm taking my nutrition seriously. I'm going to the gym. I'm going to the field. I'm so precise in my training. I'm so precise on how I was day to day that I realized if I could just continue doing that every single day, that again, it would be unrealistic for me not to get a shot because I knew where I would be. It's just a calculation. It's not me falling off for two weeks. It's not me falling off for a month. I would just wake up every day and be like, you know what? I don't want to do this, right. but I'm going to do it anyway. Absolutely. And I, to this day, I've probably been lifting for 10, ten years. years. Yeah. And I, to this day, pull into the gym parking lot and say, I don't want to go in there. I agree with you. I'm right there with you every day. I go to the field. I don't want to go out there. Your feelings don't matter, bro. Right. Especially if you if if you want to be an an NFL player, if you want to go D one, these things are baseline levels. Going to the field, lifting like an athlete, you're at zero. You get both of those done for a day, you're at zero. You're at where everybody else is at. Right. What's gonna get you to number one? What's Sleeping, gonna get you to eating, two? stretching, take care of yourself, exactly. getting better mentally. It's all it's all part of it. And it's the little stuff that adds up, dude, and people fail to understand that. They think that they had a good lift. Great. Go do it again tomorrow. That's that's the problem. They have a good lift and now let me go eat a piece of pizza or something like that. It's like that's not how it works. And that's the mistakes you and I made for we realistically lifting since Sixth, seventh grade, whatever, and we're twenty mid twenties now. Like, yeah, we wasted a lot of time, but that's that's the value that we're trying to give back to these people. Right. Save these mistakes. I promise you, we're, we're we're trying to help. But you honed in on something. We talked about the mental shift earlier, but I think your motivation you said earlier was I got to prove these people wrong. I I got to get this highlight, whatever it might be. But then I think the motivation shifted to proving yourself right rather than other people. And then, then the discipline came a little bit easier. Because day to day, like you said, you and I don't wake up and are like motivated, hyped, ready to go to the gym. It's, it's just what we do. It's a part of the identity and we do it and we're disciplined. And I think that goes one step farther is because we do 25 things a day that we don't want to do. But at the end of the day, I'm able to get put my head on the pillow and be like, yeah, I, I did that today. And I have these receipts of things that I've done. You have them as well. And now I, I don't care what other people think because I know what I did and no one has a clue what I do day to day. Right. So these kids, they, the motivation should be the big goal. The daily motivation isn't, isn't there. You might, have a, you might watch a video, get the daily motivation, but you got to have the big goal, which is the motivation. And then you got to have the plan and the discipline to execute day after day. And if you can zoom out, let's say a three-year time frame, call it a thousand days, right? You're saying you got to do stuff every day, which scares people because they do a hard day. And like, no way I can get up and do that again tomorrow. But you got to because let's say over three years, a thousand days, 50 weekends in a year, let's say it's 150 weekends that you took off, 150 days potentially. That's 10 to 15% of those three years you weren't getting better. And if you think the people at the top 
aren't working 99.9% of the time, they say the 0.1% of the population, the 0.1% of the population isn't doing the work 80% of the time. They're doing it 100% of the time, which is what these kids have to understand. And you and I were the same way. Very small scope, day to day, got to get this done right now. It didn't realize the bigger picture, like, oh, this is a long game. I'm in it for the long haul. Now we've drafted our lives. We've set up our environment. We've made a plan so that we can do this thing for 10, 15 years, no problem. Right. A huge part of that is it's, it's a little, there's some differences with football. And I say there's some differences with football because, for example, you have a kid committed to Georgia, and I've been talking about this a lot. It's different with football because you got a kid committed to Georgia who is six foot eight, three hundred and fifty pounds. He might have not lifted a weight in four or five months. He might have not gone to the field, but his sheer athletic ability that he was born with and gifted with, and his size, that will get him very far. So for me, I was an undersized football player from a very remote place. Right. Didn't get many much. Didn't get much exposure because I was from a horrible recruiting state. And this is why I had to go two, three times harder than everybody else. is because I had the odds stacked up against me. And I tell people this. I say, I went D1 twice with the odds stacked up against mm -hmm. me. I went D1 from the small town of Green, New York, where I was from. Graduated with 67 people. Had 14 kids on my team. Right. Yes, I had a preferred walk-on to a double-A school. But you don't understand that... What I went through, I was the biggest kid on the field, and I was a linebacker. Right. They play eight-man football now. Same thing going D1 the second time. I was a Division three football player who went Division one again. Right. Like, the odds were stacked up against me both times, and I just understood this, that the odds will always be stacked up against me. I'm not six foot five. I'm not 400 pounds. I'm not 300 pounds running a 4-240. Like... The, the freakish athleticism of some of these kids these days is just unbelievable. Right. So if you truly want to make it to the NFL, you truly want to go D1, you have to work twice as hard because 98% of the kids aren't like this. And they won't go Division One unless they work twice as hard. Mm -hmm. And I would assume most of my following is kids who aren't like that. I can't help a five-star football player. I know it's kind of ironic because I own the five-star football package, but if you are a five-star recruit, you don't need my help. Right. I am interested in the kids who were like me in high school. They're undersized. They are from a bad recruiting state. They go to a very small school. Their coach didn't want to help them out. They didn't know how to strengthen condition. They didn't know how to hit the field like a football player. They don't know how to eat. I'm interested in those kids. Right. And I'm interested in the kids who are hungry because they're going to have to do two, three times as much to get to that level, and that's what they need to understand. Sum up what what is the five-star football package? What is the brand, and what what's where's this thing going? So I think it was actually, that's a great question to build off of that because I kind of just got there. So the five-star football package, there's a couple different aspects of it, but the, the main five-star football package, it's basically an online ebook training package. It covers everything from strength training to field work to position work to footwork to nutrition to scheduling. It literally has everything you need all in one online training package. Everything's hyperlinked for you. It's super easy to comprehend. Your whole day is laid out for you on one page. It goes schedule or it goes workout, schedule, field workout. By workout, I mean gym workout. Everything's hyperlinked, sets, reps, all the percents are there. It is super easy, everything is done for you. You don't gotta think twice about it, just like you said early in the interview. And it's two six week cycles, so there's four that come out a year, and about every 12 weeks, one a new, a new one comes out. Because again, you have to train different in season, you have to train different in the winter training time, you have to train different during spring ball, and you have to train different and during all the summer. that's all programmed in there. Right, and mm -hmm. every one of them has them programmed in there for each position. Every single position is done from fullback to kicker, defensive back to kicker right. to quarterback. They're all done. Um, I brought experts on board for these in-season packages too. I got a D1 wide receiver who's helping and who's featured in the wide receiver package. I got a D1, former D1, was just on an NFL team defensive back, who's featured in the defensive back package. So I'm bringing other experts on board for positions that I'm not um, overly competent in to tell you what to do because I didn't play them. And again, I don't like telling people stuff unless I have personally right. done it. And I was never a good defensive back. I was never a good wide receiver because I never played those positions. Right. So I brought experts on board there, and I'm continuing to bring experts on board. Just to provide value, it's not a monthly payment. It's a single payment. You have it forever. This is just something that will help you 
become a great football player. And the, the saying is the fastest way to become an elite football player. And it's true. I have kids making insane gains in just three weeks. I have a money-back guarantee that if you don't become much better in just three weeks, I'll give you your money back because these packages are so effective because you're programming their life and not just the gym, not just the field, not just their schedule, not just nutrition. They're so effective that I can get you extreme results in three weeks, like drop your 40 by 0.2 seconds, increase your bench by 30 pounds. Some kids have increased by 50. I don't know how. That's just the package. I don't make the rules. But basically what I want to do with the package is I kind of want to recreate a, a kind of recruiting class for itself. So like, again, if a five-star were to approach me, I can't really do anything for them. They got offers from every person in the country. A three star, like, okay, I could help you out for sure. But there's a lot of kids under those three stars not even a two-star. There's kids who are under the radar who might be from a small school. They might be from a place less known who are ballers, who might get a Division One offer. And that's who I'm concerned with because I know there are so many kids each year who are underappreciated. And I want to give those kids a platform to really show their skills and to show that they are able to compete at a higher level. And just because they're from a smaller place like I was or they're from a you know a, an area that's not as highly recruited right. like i want to just give these kids a platform to really be able to do that so outside of the training plans like those will always be a thing but i do want to recreate kind of like in a recruiting platform for kids who are under recruited Where coaches and under come and see see yeah. who you have to offer I and i would like fantastic. to i would like to over time just kind of build that up and build reputable people who are coming out of that like program or whatever you. like i know right. this guy has good good, good players and a lot of like Division one double A coaches too, they they don't really know who to pick because there's there's getting these good kids who aren't ranked, but they're still kids and they might get one offer from a division one double A. But yet they could have offers from a ton of division one double A's, but they're just not known and they're not right. they don't have the exposure. Does that make sense? It makes total sense, buddy. Yeah. I love it. I can't wait to see it come to fruition. So when is the in season coming out? Where can they find it? In season package is coming out August 10th is the pre-sale. It's going to be $20 more expensive than the regular prices during the pre-sale. Because, again, there's only, there's only 10 spots available at each position. There's already hundreds of people signed up for the wait list. But the regular sale where the prices remain the same will be August 13th. I can't guarantee that every position is going to be available August 13th because the pre-sale does count towards those 10 positions. I know a lot of people are looking to get them as fast as possible. They're eager. But you can sign up for the in-season waitlist to receive all the exclusive information on any of my social media pages. It's the first link there right now. So make sure you do that if you are interested. It's jam-packed with academic stuff, lifting, nutrition, everything you need for success in season. And in-season is one of the most important times of the year for, for players because I say this in my videos. Most kids... They get worse as the season goes. They're not lifting. They're getting injured. They're not taking care of themselves. But with the in-season package, you can genuinely go up while everyone's going down. And then you can be the one making big-time plays when it counts in week 8, week Throughout 9, week season. 10. Right. 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 That was the interview, everybody. We appreciate you watching, and we hope that you get on the five-star football package because it is just jam-packed with insane value. And it's made for people like you. If you watch this whole video, it's clear that you are one of those people who need this. So make sure you get one of those ASAP. Sign up for the in-season wait list. Make sure to check out Dummy Subs as well, too. Amazing supplements. we got a bunch dropping here soon. So make sure that you are up to date on that. We appreciate you all. God bless. Have a fantastic night or day or wherever you are right now. And we hope you subscribe to the channel because we're going to be dropping more exclusive, beautiful value pack stuff like this more often. August 10th. August 10th, baby.